My name is Elizabeth Loudon, and I'm the Waterworks Grant Program Manager with King County. My name is Kelly Govan, and I work on Waterworks half of the time, and then the other half of my job, I actually work for the Wastewater Treatment Division Education Team, so leading treatment plant tours and teaching environmental ed to students, which is all on Zoom currently. And then also, we just wanted to acknowledge that here in King County that we are on the traditional land of the Duwamish, Muckleshoot, and Snoqualmie people. And we want to take this time to recognize the legacy of this land and express our gratitude and appreciation for those whose territory that we reside on and honor the people who have been stewards of our land and water since time immemorial. And we just ask you to give thanks with us today and let us acknowledge that the land we are on Specifically, thank you to the Duwamish, Muckleshoot, and the Snoqualmie people, as well as all tribes in Washington State, whether they are federally recognized or not. And we highly recommend, if you do not know whose land that you are on, to look it up so you are able to know the legacy of the land that you live and work on. This is what we will be covering today. Uh, overview of the program, how to apply, uh, where you can find some of the information on our website and the grant portal. Uh, we'll have a Q&A section. So first of all, a little background. The King County Wastewater Treatment Division is funds Waterworks uh, grant program and the funding comes from sewer fees. And this is the Wastewater Treatment Division mission statement. Uh, we are a government agency, so we um, and to use acronyms. So at one point I might slip up and say WTD, that's Wastewater Treatment Division. <laughs> I try to avoid the acronyms, but sometimes they just slip out. All right, so this map with the blue areas here, this is the system area. So right here on this map. So anytime somebody in that area washes their dishes, washes their hands, flushes the toilet, that wastewater goes to a King County wastewater treatment facility. And we do partner with 17 cities, 17 sewer districts. They, through local agreements, they manage the local uh, system, pipes and conveyance. And then King County manages <clears throat> the larger pipes and the treatment plants. All right. So a little bit of history. Uh, so back in the 1950s, this is what, uh, this was a kind of a famous now photo from Lake Washington when it was closed for swimming due to raw sewage. And that was the, that was the wastewater treatment system at that point in time was um, pipes that directly fed to Lake Washington and other bodies of water local citizens got together and formed uh, Metro, which was the predecessor of King County's wastewater treatment system. So from the beginning, King County has played a, a big role in water quality and there's been a, a very close tie between wastewater treatment and water quality. And um, so that is why now, King County Wastewater Treatment Division continues to fund things that go beyond just the treatment. So uh, protecting regional waste, uh, water quality involves source control, monitoring, protecting lakes, streams, rivers. And so there is a question on the full application about how your project relates to the wastewater treatment system, there is a link that'll take you to a table online that has examples of what are the different responsibilities, what types of projects fit. So um, that's been one of the trickier questions in the past. So we put together this table to help people out with that, but just wanted to give you a little uh, background on that. And so why does King County do this? Uh, why do we run a grant program? So this is to complement the work that the Wastewater Treatment Division does through engaging community partners and also building a stewardship ethic for clean water. And so there are two tracks of funding. And so this, is, this shows here, there's the competitive and council allocated. So 
Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the competitive track, but I also wanted to let you know about the council allocated. Council allocated. So you see there's a similar amount of money. Um, it's for the same uh, budget cycle, different application process. So what is the difference? Uh, the, what's the same between these two tracks for funding? Is the criteria the same, the eligibility and the reporting? What's different is the application process and the review process. So for the council allocated, uh, count, King County Council members and their staff uh, take the lead on uh, um, requesting requesting proposals and uh, and also doing review and selection. And so we get lots of questions about this, such as, can I apply to both? Well, yes, you can, uh, but you can't get funded twice for the same project. So best practice is submit separate proposals. If you do want to submit to both tracks, um, you can have different proposals. And also to let you know, we are going to every every cycle, grant cycle we do this, the proposals that are not funded or just partially funded, uh, those that list is forwarded to council for consideration in their uh, in their funding cycle. So there every year there's a or uh, every cycle there's a you know, a couple to a half dozen proposals that don't make the cut in the competitive, but then they end up getting funded through council. All right, and another common question is, what is my King County Council district? So from our Waterworks website, I click on the council allocated funding page and there's a little bit of information here. There's links to what's been funded previously. And then there's also this council district finder where you can click, you end up on this page where you can type in an address. You can also look at a map and then you can get contact information for each council member's office. All right, so that was, um, that was the part about the council funding and then the rest of what I'm going to be talking about is the competitive process because that's what Kelly and I are. That's what Kelly and I do. Yeah. So there are a lot of different types of projects that can be funded through Waterworks. Um, and so here's an illustration uh, of that. Uh, you can see we have a community water quality monitoring uh, during COVID. Uh, safely spaced here. And then this is a previous project that was a large capital uh, restoration project. So the a good way to see what has been funded in the past is we have a list of all the projects and short descriptions of them of what has been funded um, on our website. Okay, so Besides water quality benefits, you're going to hear us talk about the water quality a lot. Uh, what, uh, how else are proposals evaluated? So these are the criteria. So water quality, 60%. There's also implementation strength and certainty of success, which is, which has a couple of different things in it, but that is how, um, how feasible your project seems to be, how clear it is. Um, and then community involvement is self-explanatory. Equity and social justice are included in all of these categories. So you do, it is, uh, it is a plus to have equity and social justice considerations and they're included in all of those. All right, so this is why King County is committed to equity and social justice. This is the overarching principle. This is a, a mandate of King County has in all of our programming. And the reason for that is because a number of studies have shown that where you live and the color of your skin, race and place uh, really determine health and wealth 
And so there have been shown um, uh, disparities in, for example, life expectancy for people in one zip code to another. So we're all working together to change that and improve things. And so that's why we're working on equity and social justice. And how does this apply to the grant program? So this is how proposals are analyzed for equity and social justice. And so the three main categories are people of color, limited English proficiency and low income communities. And to get resources such as democratic, uh, demo, demographic maps, uh, you can find those on the resources section on the website. And another way, so this goes along with implementation strength and certainty of success is um, the capacity of your organization and or partner organizations to reach uh, uh, diverse communities. Um, do you have the skills? Do you have the relationships built? And let's see here. There we go. I have to click that arrow, not the other thing. Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, another way proposals are analyzed for equity and social justice strengths is, do they benefit water quality in an ESG area? So I have had questions occasionally, such as, you know, if my project doesn't have any um, equity and social justice components to it, can we still get funded? And the answer is yes. We fund all types of projects all around the county. And um, so it's not a requirement, it's uh, a good thing to have. And the same actually is true for community involvement. We have funded some projects before that are, um, for example, a large capital project, which you know has a, a potential high benefit to water quality, but may not have community involvement because it's um, because of the nature of the project. <clears throat> All righty. So here's some more details. These are the amounts that you can ask for somewhere between 20,000 and 200,000. And, uh, you know, if you're wondering, like, for my project, how much money should I be asking for? Um, you can look at the fund, previously funded projects to see kind of ranges. Um, yeah, so obviously if the higher the dollar amount, the more, um, the fewer, we fund fewer large projects. So it's, it's harder to get more money, but then you can do more. So there's kind of pros and cons there. We have a biennial grant cycle, so we will not have a grant cycle next year. Um, this, is, this is it for for the uh, two years of budget. And the same is also true of the council allocations. And this, this question has been coming a lot up a lot. Um, so this would apply to Nancy. Uh, yes, you can apply if your organization already has an active grant or if you've you know, recently completed a WaterWorks grant. It's a two-step application process, first step letter of intent and then full application. The LOI, it sounds like a letter, but it's actually an online form, about four pages long. Uh, we have mapping tools online where you can see that blue, um, the water quality service area. You can type in an address. You can also go to an interactive map where you can overlay um, different layers, like you can look at uh, watershed boundaries. You can look at council district uh, boundaries, or you can also uh, find streams on there. There's a stream layer. And we use a grant portal for online application and management. And we do not have a specific limit for overhead. Uh, you can, and there are two ways to do overhead. Um, this will be in the full application rather than the LOI, but you can either charge overhead as a separate line item in your budget, or you can include it in your salary so that you're charging, you know, billing rates. Um, so depending on 
what kind of accounting system and um, you use, one might be easier or preferable to the other system. And match, another common question we get, uh, we require 10% match. Of course, you can do uh, more match. Uh, you can see instructions on the budget page of the full application for details on this. And this is what it can include, cash match, in-kind, or volunteer hours. There is, a, there is an exemption for community-based organizations serving underserved populations. And that's just a checkbox um, that you can request that uh, exemption. And then you do not have to have match. All right, so here's the timeline. This is also on our website. And so February 17th, 5 p.m. Um, deadline for letters of intent. And then after that, in late April, we'll be letting people know their status, either uh, they are invited to submit a full application or not. And then the full application is due a month later, May 26, 5 p.m. There's review over the summer and then authorization. The, the list of projects that are recommended for funding go through authorization to the King County Executive and also King County Council. That takes a little while. Uh, and after that's that's done, then projects will begin um, approximately. That's why we have we don't have a specific date, but uh, winter or spring 2022. So that I uh, wanted to let you know that for planning purposes, and also if you're trying to figure out, um, you know how to how to scope your project. All righty, so. The website, I'm guessing probably a lot of you have looked at the Waterworks website and um, there's a lot on here. So I uh, encourage you to poke around and, and take a look at what's there. Um, the dates are there, eligibility. We have this update box that, you know, when things come up, we'll, we'll put it in there. Um, the application process, let me go through that. Uh, this is the application process page. There's a number of subpages under that for evaluation. There's kind of that breakdown of how things are evaluated, but in much more detail there. Funding policies, um, if you want to know, you know, what types of activities can be funded, that kind of thing. How to go about creating an account, and then the resources that I met that I um, that I mentioned before. All right, and also I'm going to back up for just a second and show you from the home page. If you click on eligibility, it'll tell you, you know, who are the eligible applicants and also eligible location. So that's where you'll find the mapping tools. Okay, and then this is a list further down on the application page. So this is just um, some recommendations to prepare your proposal, things to review. Uh, a whole a whole list of them. And also, you can also uh, contact uh, Kelly or I and um, set up a short meeting with us to discuss your proposal and ask questions. So sometimes people ask questions like, you know, here's what we want to do. Is that seem like a good match for Waterworks? Or sometimes people say, well, we have these three different ideas, which do you, which do you think would um, be the best fit for Waterworks? Um, sometimes people have kind of, you know, what are the pros and cons of having this approach versus that approach? So yeah, we're happy to, we're happy to do that. Um, we are getting lots of calls these days. And so we recommend that you contact us uh, sooner rather than later. But yeah, we're, we're happy to chat. All right, so applying, where do you apply? Um, right here. So from any, actually most of the uh, different pages on the Waterworks website, um, you go over here and click on online grant portal. And then you end up somewhere completely different. So this says King County, cause it's, our, it's our grant program, but it's actually not a King County website. It's a different company that has this wonderful tool that we use for 
managing grants. So um, you can bookmark this page, but you can also always find it from the Waterworks pages. If you have not used this system before, then you can create a new account right here. There are tutorials available, including site access and account creation. So if you don't have an account, but somebody else in your organization has you know, applied for or gotten a Waterworks grant before, um, you can try typing in the organization uh, when you're doing create an account. All right, and one other thing I wanted to point out is there is a collaborator feature here. There's a video and written tutorial. So each grant request, each grant proposal has one contact person. Um, however, you can have other people help work on your grant proposal with you if you like by inviting them through this collaborator feature. So that's kind of handy. And they could be with your organization, they could be with another organization. You just need to, you know, click on the right button and then fill in their um, email and they'll get an invitation. Okay. So uh, another handy thing here is if you forgot your password, just click on forgot your password. And then after you've created an account, you can just click log in the next time you come. Alrighty, so that's the grant portal basics. If you have questions, if you get stuck, um, feel free to call us. There are things that we can help you out with on that. And the form. So you all should have received uh, one of your emails from Kelly. You should have received a PDF version of the form. And you can also, you know, just go online and um, start looking at it online. It's kind of handy to look at the PDF. Um, this will show, tell you, you know, what are the questions, the ones with the red asterisk are required questions and also character limit, which does include spaces. So then you'll know, you know, like project name, okay, character limit of 100, that's not very long, but the summary can be 800. Um, so that's available. That will also be posted on our website, but you know, like I said, you can just go in. So when you're actually filling out the form, you can, uh, start, you can write, you know, one sentence of the LOI and then save it and go back later. And you can do that as many times as you want. Um, just remember to submit it before the deadline. Okay, so here's the process for competitive grants, um, the review process. So we have a grant ranking committee that is responsible for reviewing ranking and recommending projects. And they are volunteers from, uh, who are not county employees who are appointed by the executive and council to fill this role and they do a lot of work. They do a great job. And so we'll be meeting virtually this year, but we have three new PAC, that's the, um, the sewer districts uh, representatives. We have seats for one, um, one per county council to represent residents and then also one water quality technical specialist. And then in addition to the committee reviews, uh, and recommendations. Um, we have internal reviews by King County staff with different areas of expertise and uh, they review and comment on proposals. All right, I just remembered that I can move the bar. Great, okay. Alrighty. Oh, and we can also give you feedback on the review. So we'll send, you know, we'll be sending out um, after the review is done, both of the LOI and the full proposal will be sending out the results in an email and then say, if you'd like feedback, let us know and we're happy to do that. All right, tips for a good proposal. So start early. You can just, you know, you want to get kind of familiar with the grant portal and how to use it and what is my organization EIN number I don't know you might have to ask somebody those types of things so start it early you can 
uh, keep going back, submit it early. We can't accept late applications. So 5 p.m. is the deadline. We can't accept anything after five. If it's 501, even if your internet goes out and you have a very sad story about, you know, whatever it is, we won't be able to do that. Uh, review the guidelines on the website and clarity and logic are really important. Um, so make sure things connect, use the same kind of call things by the same names. This is more up applicable to the full proposal, but so that if we're looking at your scope of work, your budget, your narrative, we know how, how they all come together. And I also have some tips. These are from the grant ranking committee. And so they, uh, here are some suggestions from the people who are responsible for reviewing these proposals. So uh, one thing they said is have somebody review the proposal who's not at all familiar with the project to see if they understand it. So I think that's a good one. Uh, don't assume that we know who you are, meaning your organization and what you've done already. Describe your prior experience and results. And there is a question about um, organizational capacity. So that's a good place to put that. And then details, especially target outcomes. So numbers are good to have, um, especially in your scope of work in the full proposal, but there's also a question about that in the in the LOI about goals and outcomes. Next is remember the basics, such as who you are, what you're planning to do, where, when, and why. And then another one is water quality is the main criteria. So make sure that this is the focus of the discussion. So even if there's additional benefits, such as habitat restoration, salmon recovery, there are a lot of things that go together. But um, you know, for us, it's the water quality. So you can talk about additional benefits, um, but the water quality is what's going to make it uh, a, a strong proposal. And then another idea I had is if you do have that reviewer, that coworker, that friend, um, somebody who can kind of be the fresh set of eyes at, the, at your final draft, uh, maybe you could share these tips with them. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you're funded, so this would be great. Some of you are gonna be getting funding and your projects will begin winter, spring, a year from now. Uh, there is quarterly reports and final reports that are required. And the generally the projects are um, have two years uh, to complete and uh, three years in some cases. Um, we like documenting. We re, you know require doc, some type of documentation. Um, looking at my notes, this is from pre pandemic, it says invite us and elected officials to events. So actually somebody did, some people have been having online celebrations and um, Zoom things to show their results. So that's fun. All right, so we're going to post this recording online. If you are watching this, uh, the recorded session and have questions, feel free to contact us.